We're going to start off this series by unboxing the Signal R2 kit. At the top, you'll see a little congratulations letter with links to where to find instructions. After that, we have some essential BPS.space stickers. Then we have our TVC and flight computer drill and cut guides. In an anti-static bag, we have the Signal flight computer, under which we have the M3.5 millimeter screws, and then a bag with some smaller components and a little 9 volt battery connector. These are the airframe mounts to hold the flight computer inside the rocket. Then there are some major TVC components. These are the inner and outer gimbal. And in the final bag, we have our thrust vector control servos, extension cables, and the motor mount. We'll start building with the Signal R2 flight computer, the bag of small components, the M3.5 screws, and the flight computer mounting brackets. Take Signal R2 and the mounting brackets out of their bags, and then look at the labeling on the mounting brackets. You'll notice some subtle differences between the two, and that each one has stars facing the same direction. For everything to work well, the stars on these mounts and the thrust vectoring mounts must align. We'll get into this more later, but for now just place the top and bottom mounting brackets onto the flight computer. Next up, from the bag of M3.5 screws, grab four of the long ones, then screw them through each of the two holes in each mounting bracket. Next up, we need to power the flight computer. Grab the 9 volt battery connector from the bag of small components and insert it into signal R2. Both the wires should go into the BAT terminal block. It's right above Pyro Channel 1. The red wire goes into the plus side and the black wire goes into the minus side. Make sure these are screwed in nice and tight. If either of these wires comes loose, you will not be going to space today. Now we're gonna grab a brand new 9 volt battery and cover it in blue tape. The outside of the battery is a little bit conductive, so we're covering it to protect the flight computer when it's on the back. Now it's time to connect the battery to the flight computer, but we're not gonna turn it on just yet. We need a micro SD card. This is a blank one that I got brand new, and we're gonna insert it into the back of the flight computer. Then we're gonna manage these wires a little bit by wrapping them around the battery, putting the battery on the back of the flight computer, and securing the whole thing with a rubber band. Now that all these steps are complete, you can turn your flight computer on with the power switch. This green blinking state means that Signal has passed all startup checks and is ready for launch. Let's take a look at what's going on inside the Signal flight computer. Using the App Store on your iPhone or the Google Play Store on your Android device, download the Signal app from bps.space. When you open the app, you'll be greeted with a screen that looks like this. Your flight computer may already show up in a list, but if it doesn't, you can tap the refresh button. Tap on Signal R2 and then Sensors. This page is full of data about what the flight computer is doing. We can look at the gyroscopes, the accelerometers, the battery voltage, and a few other things. If you navigate into System Preferences, you can find buttons to test the TVC system, the LED, the buzzer. You can even enable or disable the idle beeps, which will be helpful later. This app is used to control just about everything on your flight computer, so it's a good idea to get familiar with it. Now we'll shut down the flight computer and get ready for the next step.